Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inside Infinity Show. This is uh, the Inside Infinity episode number 77 roundtable. Bringing it back with uh, just a gaggle of guys, a gaggle of troublemakers. <laughs> so we have myself, Will Kelly, uh, Jason Haynes is back with us. The birthday boy, Stephen Krellen. Happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. This is going to be a mess of a show. I can just tell you right now out of the gate, we're already <laughs> laughing. That's that's I am excited. I missed that. I was like for the inaugural roundtable show, we had to bring the two Steves back because I people have been outside my house with pitchforks and torches <laughs> saying, Bring back the Steves, bring back the Steves. No, I lied about that last part. They've actually bribed me not to bring you back, but it wasn't enough money. Your bribe was bigger, so here you are. <laughs> That is a clear and obvious lie. I've seen the Twitter feed. Boondoggle Man alone and John Cocker always ask for it. So don't, don't tell me that it's they true. don't want us on here, Will. And your boy Conrad. Conrad? Well, he kind of drifted away. Conrad and I had a falling out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, that other voice you heard, that sexy deep voice you heard, is none other than the one and only Pirate Steven. Pirate, welcome back, my friend. That's oh, you. thanks for having me. It's been like two, three months now. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I bet against all of you, and it, we are not meeting on the Axiom in the year 2030-whatever. Uh, so you guys both owe me. You owe me something. We owe you great show quality. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> That's the best way that you could possibly pay me. I see we just got 20 new viewers just now. <laughs> we, did, we did it. <laughs> it jumped up so fast it almost broke the stream. You're welcome, Will. So if you like what we're doing here uh, with this roundtable, so let me let me preface it a little bit. The roundtable is going to be the four of us or the four of someone sitting here in the, around this virtual roundtable uh, where we are discussing in, Infinity, I don't know, culture, Dizzy Infinity culture. This week we're going to be talking about the Dizzy Infinity community. Each week it's going to be something different, uh, but it's something, it's more conversational and it's uh, kind of like the, the shows of old. We want to get a, bring a little bit of that conversation back into the fold. Uh, you can watch this after the standard Inside Infinity podcast each week. Uh, let's just say, I don't know, 8.30 Mountain Time for this show. Uh, you can head over to DizzyInfinity.tv for that and Twitch.tv forward slash DizzyInfinityTV to watch the live stream. Uh, Steven, you do a, a, to give people that are unfamiliar with the two of you, you do a Disney and movie podcast uh on the media meltdown network is that correct yes it is um i do uh, a couple of different shows on there but the one that i like the most or that i'm most passionate about is the one that you've been on a few times and the one that i am constantly trying to get pirate steve on and that's the media meltdown mouse cast and we just talk about everything disney from parks to games to movies to just all sorts of nonsense and we do that about every other week so um we always like it when you come on you're a big uh fan favorite so well and and i mean you you have been a part of our community for a long time and had mo many a conversation about disney infinity uh you and i are uh, started up a new infinity theme park show so you know your infinity stuff uh yeah yeah i would i would say that i'm a a, a novice user of infinity <laughs> <laughs> novice user all right well uh everyone knows jason so i'm not going to go over him but the pirate steven for those that don't know you are hailing not only as a again a part of our community with the podcast and the network uh but also part of the disney infinity fans forum it's the biggest and uh most active disney infinity community forum on the internet right that's a fact. Um, yeah, we're almost up to 5,000 members, which is a pretty cool milestone. Uh, the forum's been around since uh, the original announcement when the game was uh, announced. And, um, yeah, I've been there since the beginning, and I'm a moderator there, and um, I'm part captain of the Toy Box artist community that we have there. Uh, we're up to 84% of the featured toy boxes come from members of the Disney Infinity Fans Forum. So it's just a great place to learn about the game mm -hmm. and uh, and how to build toy boxes. Well, not only that, you're not only a part of both of those teams, the mod team and the artist team, but you are a winner, multi-winner. Multi What's your count at now? <sighs> 16. What? You've won 16 toy boxes. So you That's are like... Third the ranked. Third ranked out of uh, all the toy box artists, but... There's a lot of competition, so I'm enjoying my third rank while I got it. Nice. I was, uh, <clears throat> we were talking pre-show, and I was asking if you were sick, and you're like, nope, just haven't been getting enough sleep because if you're sleeping, you're not building toy boxes. 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been doing this for uh, this time last year. I had three featured or two featured toy boxes. So uh, I've been at it for almost uh, over a year now without really any long breaks. So uh, yeah, if I'm not if I'm sleeping, I'm not building toy boxes and. Uh, yeah, and that's it. I'm just exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's paying off. Uh, 16, you got to ensure your, your invite to this year's summit. It's true. So, uh, Stephen, I'm going to let you introduce tonight's topic as I step off camera for a little bit uh, or for a moment. And uh, what are we going to be talking about on, on tonight's roundtable? Yeah, come on, Stephen. Don't you remember we were preparing for this all day today and reading show notes? What's the first topic? <laughs> the round table. Yeah, we're going to be talking about... Um, the Evilos custom. Wait, they just did that. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking about uh, the, I would call it the current state of the Disney Infinity community. Because as we know, the community is a big part of this game. Um, it's, yeah, it's huge. So um, we're kind of comparing it to what it was like last year to this year, see what's improved, um, see maybe. Uh, things that happened this year that the Disney infinity uh, company would like to forget about and, um, and how, th how, how we can move forward. Yeah. What so is something that you think they would like to forget about? <laughs> You're just uh, the hardball right off the bat. Huh, <laughs> you see? Well, actually, that was a softball right up there. I floated it up for Jason, Mr. Passion. I want to hear his response. <laughs> no, well, no, no, I've, 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 let's hear his pirates. So I, 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 I say Disney Infinity 1.0 was definitely my all-time favorite game, and uh, it was the game I've always wanted. And uh, when they announced 2.0, I mean, the expectations are through the roof. It's going to be two times as great. Um, there's a lot of improvements in the game, but from the beginning, it always felt like it was a beta-type release, uh, and that 3.0 was going to be the real sequel. So they really didn't have much development time, I would believe, to get the second one done because they were hard working on the first one. Mm -hmm. So I think 3.0 is going to blow everybody out um, of their socks off. But uh, 2.0 just felt like a mid-release of the game instead of a full release. You know, the, those are some great points, uh, CFC. So any big budget game... It, so if you look at Assassin's Creed with the early releases, or you look at Battlefield, if you look at uh, Call of Duty, those games that come out that are AAA titles come out every year, though they have multiple developers behind them. And uh, Infinity has that to a point, but the, the majority of the heavy lifting as far as the, the biggest piece of this pie, and that's the toy box, is really only one, and that's Avalanche Studios. They, they do get help with the play sets. Uh, but it's a huge undertaking turning our, around an upgraded infinity every every year. It's just a, a lot to take on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Way to not leave any segues. That was like a perfect period at the end of that sentence. <laughs> yep, that, that's show's over. Thanks, uh, guys, for joining, and Thanks. we will see you next week. <laughs> now, you know, I never thought about it like that before. Steve, you just mentioned it exactly perfectly. The way we've actually talked about it here in our house, too, is I, I've never even thought about it like that. The whole time it has felt almost like a beta test. That is such a perfect way of saying it. I've never heard it like that before. And it, it's really, really accurate because I think that's kind of what a lot of people are feeling mm -hmm. about it. So, I mean, that's a pretty good breakdown yeah, I mean, of it. If you have that type of mindset to it, you really like all, all these myths, like the uh, we'll talk about Tron stuff later or the leaked Marvel box or any of the really big leaks. But if you keep in mind that, okay, so they could just skip 2.0 altogether and just made a release every two years and we'd have a whole year, this whole year of not having anything. Mm -hmm. But now we have all these Marvel characters, which are a lot of fun to play with. I would, I would much rather have more characters and content in a watered down uh, game than to wait an extra year for more stuff. I just hope that they keep on doing more um, straight to iPad only characters because that's a huge <laughs> fan favorite I am as well. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I would rather have a watered down or not spectacular version of the game uh, just to have something every year and something for us to record about and something for Jason to say I told you so about <laughs> and something more for me to spend an obscene amount of money on because it does give me a hobby uh, to collect and uh, it's it's a blast. It is so much fun. 
even though I feel like this one, there's so many holes and, you know, things like that that I have issues with, it's still more fun than anything else. So I can't really complain that much. I know I sound like I'm whining when I poke holes and I say I have issues with the game and stuff like that, but it's, it's still fun. I love doing it. It's still the only game that I play and uh, I really get into it. Uh, and every time I'm at any target, it's so weird. There's a weird thing over the past two years collecting these stupid figures and all these things. I will walk through a target or a Toys R Us, even though I know I have every single character, I walk down the row and I'm just like, yeah, okay, there's nothing new here. I don't know what happened, but something <laughs> got into my soul that I have to check through That's that awesome. aisle all the time. It's a really weird Rain Man kind of thing now where it's like definitely, definitely got to look. Definitely got to look at the characters. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a weird thing, and I, I, I'm not complaining. I enjoy it. So uh, a few comments from the chat room. So first off, Evil Lost is saying, boom, drop the mic, Steve C. Which, uh, yeah. <laughs> but Full of Gunk is also saying the improvements we received were still far better than 1.0 game. So this this lukewarm version of the game, this game that didn't quite fulfill all the promises that were uh, given to us, what, what do you guys think? Was it uh, is it an issue where the game – isn't that great? Is it an issue where they overpromise and, and undelivered? Because we're kind of all in agreement, at least uh, on this panel, where they they far outdid the functionality of the first game. So I think if I had to put it down to something, Will, if I had to nail this down, I think the community is key. What Pirate's talking about, I think what happened was is they bet big on the toy box, huge on the toy box, clearly put play sets to the side a little bit and thought let's see if we how much emphasis we can put in the toy box but then while creating major improvements in the toy box a it shipped broken which doesn't mm. help uh, and b i just don't think they gave us the community enough tools to make the toy box um as powerful as it could have been because remember we only got web-based search for toy boxes only just recently like that's functionality that should have been available from the get-go because toy box discovery has been virtually useless outside of those top five toy boxes being selected. And let's use, I don't want to harp on this, but let's use the last uh, example, last uh, challenge as an example where my toy box didn't get mentioned in the top five. That <laughs> it, wait, wait, is that an error? Is that, is that a... I, well, I'm not, saying there's a tech, I'm not saying there's technical issues there. I'm just saying... <laughs> <laughs> that how many other epic toy boxes like that have gone under the radar because they've been sixth, let's be honest, sixth. Um, yeah. <laughs> like how many other great toy boxes have fallen the wayside there? There's no way to discover those outside of if you're following a YouTuber who's playing them regularly and suggesting them. Mm -hmm. There's like, there's no easy way. There's not even a good... It's such a limited tag system. I was thinking just this morning, how good would it be if somewhere on the, um, whether it's in the game or on the website, they had a list of categories of game types um, and characters. So as a community member, a toy box builder, you could go into that menu and go, well, show me all the toy boxes that are, um, I don't know, uh, group group-based toy boxes. And you can see that there's no toy boxes in that category. Then you know it's going to be worth my time building a group toy box because no one's fulfilling that need, if you know what I mean. And yeah. then it breaks it down a bit more. You've got a bit more community. It makes more sense then as people are upvoting the best Falcon boxes. They're upvoting the best Disneyland ride boxes. You know what I mean? Splitting it into more categories. Mm -hmm. I just think moves like that have pretty much hindered the community from being able to support the game because everything just gets lost in this huge list of of titles and it's such a slow process of downloading them and testing them that it just makes it hard for the toy box to shine yeah uh, yeah i agree with you on that and um it seems and this is this is what I've, we've noticed um that some of the toy boxes that are locked down to a single singular character are are getting the most likes and um and downloads because um I, i'll use um uh, Mighty Jidus's Brave one as an example. That has a tremendous amount of likes because you know you need Merida to play that one, and um, uh, my Spider-Man one. You need uh, I made it so it's Spider-Man only to play it, and out of all my boxes, that one is has the most likes to it. So it seems like p 
people are uh, gravitating to character specific toy boxes. And that'd be a cool search feature. Even and for the challenges too. If under de developers picks or under uh, toy boxes, it'd be cool to have a subcategory. So it might say multiplayer challenges. You can click on that to see all the multiplayers uh, and so on. Yeah, you yeah. Have it should be much second. more. Uh, sorry, Steve, for just one second. Okay. Why don't you have on the? T you know how you got the, the front screen, the logo, the intro screen. It should be as soon as you put down a character on that screen, it should bring up all the suggested toy boxes for that character right there. That's well, there's no discovery. Them, right? There's no dis no not all of them, but you could okay. put the most liked, the top five most okay. liked for that character. There's no toy box discovery whatsoever. Even the search is pretty much useless unless you know That's what you're. It's gonna be three point oh, and we're gonna be. Jason said it. <laughs> <laughs> it was his idea. <laughs> Steve, C, you had something to say. Yeah, but it was more sarcastic. I was going to say, wouldn't it be great if there was a search tool to find the, the toy box online that had the most glitches that wouldn't start and the camera was the worst? Because I would really like to search those ones out because it seems like those are the ones that I always get. <laughs> That's awesome. You're, you want some uh, community content quality control. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, except I want more garbage. Uh oh, what oh. happened? Oh no, we lost Jason. Uh, we just lost his video. It looks like his audio is still here. You guys noticed that when we lost him, my camera went really wide. Like I just pushed him out to the side. <laughs> you see that? Like what? Did, what just okay. happened? Did I completely just take over? Like, look at this. You move <laughs> to the side. This is my show now. I, I mean, I didn't want to say anything, Steve, but I thought it was too much birthday cake. Let's do a fist bump, yeah. Steve, if you want. Which side are you on? Wrong side. The side. Wrong side. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh yeah, just watch. Ready? Oh, <laughs> Jason, are you still here? Audio? I, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yep, we can. Lost oh, well, there video. I am. Yes, thanks, Steve. It's all right. Too ugly. What can I say? So we, we're going to get your awesome uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Neo look there from Agent Smith. Yeah. See, I That's told fine. you. A lot, I love these things with errors and glitches. It's a lot of fun. We just had Jason. Now we don't. And just like a lot of the toy boxes I play in. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, Mighty Jidus, uh, Lauren, a, a very accomplished toy box builder and toy box winner herself, is saying, Preach, Jason. Tagging feature is something... Uh, oh, laughing out loud. I want tags and profiles on consoles and search and rating by stars. So that's that's her ideal way of handling... Uh, handling. And I, I'm going to give Steve C. this idea. I think he's spot on. I think, again, give the community more voting power and be able to vote whether the toy box is glitched, whether it can be finished... You know what I mean? Be a bit more descriptive in mm -hmm. your review, so again, the best ones can bubble to the top. Like someone should be able to give. There should be a rating based on one to five stars for good story, one to five stars for good gameplay. You know what I mean? A bit yeah. more descriptive than just like. Like yeah, if I'm wanting a good story, tell me it's got a good story. It should be after you play Neverland Surviving Games that a box mm -hmm. pops up that you have to click yes or no if you liked it or not. That's because brilliant. if not, you're you're get. The person has to go and click the L2 button for whatever toy box they like, and people are lazy. No, that's, that's a great. You can't even you can't even vote in game. You're right. You have and, to go exit out, go to the menu, then refine the toy box in order to like it. And and what and if you could if you're doing a search online, it, it'd be cool if you could like it online as opposed to having to play the toy box or or going on your console to like it. Sorry, I turned my camera back on and Steve pushed me off again. <laughs> oh, oh, and now Will's gone. Such a troublemaker, Jason. Sorry, sorry. Right. Great. Uh, yeah. I, so, so basically, what what you guys are asking to reinforce that community uh, aspect of the toy box building is a a better tagging and searching so, tagging rating and searching system. Definitely. Yeah. I like that. I like that too. I really like your idea, Jason. Make people, or no, Steve, uh, make people play the toy box. And that way people aren't just voting, oh man, this is an Elsa or toy box. Or, oh man, this is an evening with Groot. It has Groot in the name. I'm going to vote it up. It makes people actually play the uh, the toy boxes. Yeah, you want, you want a lot of downloads? Put a toy box out there and call it Frozen or Elsa or have some kind of Elsa screenshot. You have guaranteed at least 10,000 downloads. <laughs> I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. Uh, Steve C in the chat, you got a shout out by SWA Love 2020. That's right. That's my buddy. Jordan. Long time. See, he likes that I offer absolutely nothing to the conversation. Jason and Steve have legitimate things, and I bring sarcasm back around because. I, 
I love it. That was your it's idea. Awesome. I just gave you credit. That was epic. Yeah, but you were just you were being sympathetic just now. I heard the way you said it. You're like, yeah, and Steve C, I'll, I'll tag on to that and say good job. You were just being my friend because I said nice things about your show the other day. Don't don't patronize me. Jeez, Jason, come on. You know I add nothing to the show. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so what else, guys? What what else? Have, uh, what is the state of the the Infinity community right now? Do you guys annoyed. think annoyed? <laughs> annoyed. Okay, Steve C, why is why is the community annoyed? I'll tell you why they're annoyed because, and I'm not going to just rip up all the stuff that Jason said from a few weeks ago and do it again. I have heard from so many different people that Jason was so 100% right. I really don't think that people understood how actually, like, I guess you could say personal, they took the whole core and what's his name, D DLC things, you know, the iPad mm -hmm. only. And I don't know if it's that Jason pointed out the fact that someone worded it really poorly in their speech, but I would say people are annoyed and frustrated. And, uh, you know, on the mouse cast, we got a lot of people that were replying back because we did talk about it. We did a show where we talked about top five Disney mistakes of all time, and that was on one of the lists. And people responded to that as well. And it's not just my five immediate friends that you guys are, you know, involved with. It's other people, too. Lots of people didn't like it. And I can see it on the threads a lot. It, Twitter blew up. So I really think that people are frustrated with it and annoyed. It, it is a slap in the face. And uh, if that's how it's going to go, Jason said it best it makes me next time maybe not even think about buying the console game. If they're going to be putting more effort into the, the free game, then maybe that's the way it should be. You know, maybe I don't need to spend, you know, $600 on all of these things. I'll just do the $50 download and get the characters that way. Right. It's not as fun, but if that's the way that they're going to cater it to, then maybe that's the way it's going to go. See, there's my serious rant for you right now. I just repeated everything that Jason said two weeks ago, <laughs> but I played it off like it was my own. Well, it's, it's interesting, right? Because this has been the first... And it might be a little melodramatic, but this is the first Infinity scandal we've had. This is the first gate. It's it's a trend to put gate after anything that's controversial. And this is, uh, at least as far as I can think of, the first time that uh, this has happened for Infinity. Uh, what do you think, Steve uh, Pirate? Do you think that, uh, that Disney listened and they're going to try to not make these mistakes again in the future? Yeah, uh, anything that... Uh, that is DLC, I could totally see them c coming out with, or exclusive even, like the, the Vita black suit Spider-Man. There's no way that's just gonna be exclusive to Vita forever. They gotta they gotta get people to purchase Vita. So put make make uh, make it exclusive timed and they'll eventually release it. I think the same thing with these iOS only characters. All of the um, program is done for them, then they'll make a figure of them eventually, I would figure. And, um, release it yeah. and they did they did sort of cover their butts because you did see that tweet or that response afterwards where it was like whoa 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 we never said that it was never <laughs> coming here you know and it's just like you could tell that that was like pr department and you know whoa they didn't say hey we are but they definitely were like hey let's sit back and you know to be completely honest when this whole thing happened I didn't really thought that it was only going to be for the iOS. Yeah. It could come out next year or whatever, but um, especially with those characters, they're not Marvel related, so it would still make sense if they came out next year. It would be weird if you had a Marvel character come out with the next game being, whether it be Star Wars or whatever it is. This one always works, so I never really thought it was going to be gone, but the way that it was worded, it was just worded really poorly. And to be a part of the Disney community that is such a fantastic you know, exquisite, you know, explanation of what PR looks like. I think it was a big misstep and just the wording of it was very uh, poor choice. And yeah. I did wait months for my Best Buy shipment to get here. And uh, <laughs> the next time I won't have to do that. Unacceptable, unacceptable. So we kind of, we pride ourselves in the show and obviously it's a very opinionated show and any of the guests who have on and the hosts, uh, but we also would like to think that we are echoing the thoughts of the community as well. On our episode 76 of the Ensign Infinity podcast, uh, we discussed Tron Gate at length and we got this comment from longtime listener Infinity fan. It says, uh, I find myself shaking my head as he listens to this podcast. Feel like there's some blindness or failure to be familiar with our capitalist society and what we are likely to find in such an environment. Here's what I mean. Why won't Disney tell us whether or not the Tron figures will eventually make it onto other platforms? Answer, obvious. Would you buy them on iOS or PC if you knew they are eventually coming to the console? I, yeah, right? Isn't that, isn't that it? And isn't that part of the reason 
go, yeah, go ahead, no, Steve. He has a really good point, but he blows it up completely by making no sense. If it's a capitalist <laughs> thing and their, their comment was, we're going to give this to the people because iOS is the most used platform of the game. Right, Jason? They said that. If you're going to say that... I said it was the, their biggest biggest, their, uh, biggest base or whatever. Yeah, their biggest base, right? If they're going to say that, then why would they ever release a character for it as well? If they're already saying, no, 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 the biggest users are the people that use the free one, then it doesn't really matter. So his point is legit, and it's all capitalist, and it makes sense because you got to make money. They're not out here for right. free. It's not just giveaways. But his point doesn't really b balance out, I think, because... <laughs> It, it, it just doesn't. Sure, give it away for free or charge the $4. We bought Korra to play on our own. That's It's 4 bucks, and that's how it goes. If the characters were out there, we would have bought them again. But what their point was was iOS is the way that this thing is going to go. And this is where most people are using it, so we're going to give it to them. If his point was right, then they would say no. The only way you're ever going to get it is if you're going to get it from here. But why would they do that? Why wouldn't you sell a $15 character? Well, sell well, the, buy the character comes with the code then you use it you know it, it doesn't make sense if he's saying that it's all about the money revenue well that's that but it does doesn't it right because would I, I will raise my hand and say that if i knew this was coming as a physical figure i wouldn't purchase it on ios because i know that i would get the the digital card eventually i'm patient enough to wait for that and i think that's the point he's making okay. is Here's, that if if they were up Front. Ultra patience. Then you're talking li waiting a year for something like that. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. I, I think okay, it's. I just that makes a, sense. Except for I don't think the community is really like that. Do you see people waiting forever? You know, I guess that's yeah. not true because I still see on the Facebook pages people going and buying 1.0 characters that they saw on sale at Toys R Us. So I guess that's a good point. It's just everyone I know they go and buy it the first month or two that they're out. It's sort right. of like I, I don't know a single person that's still buying 1.0 characters. I just don't. You know, once in a while, I see people rushing to Toys R Us saying, hey, there's a great deal on 1.0 discs. I'm like, what? 1.0 discs? What are you doing? Where have you been for, you know, a year and a half now? But right. I guess there are some people out there that are, you know, more patient. And, you know, I don't, I don't yeah, see and it. And my there. point is we just got through discussing that Disney Infinity 2.0, Disney were betting on the community. They were betting on us building toy boxes that were going to be playset quality that would basically sweep under the carpet the fact that they didn't have many play sets for this version of the game and that's what's so silly about this move is because they were betting on us they were expecting us to produce the content and then they go and do this you know backdoor you know action that that sort of screws over the very community they were hoping was going to pull the game into this next level it's the one that it was built on you know when you went and saw them at you know d23 and comic-con and e3 you didn't see them passing around ipads doing to do it you had to go hold the controller in your hand and they marketed off of buying these beautiful characters and all this other stuff if you're gonna it, it just doesn't make sense it's it's backwards you're gonna all of us are spending all this money to buy these characters and then you're using all of that brilliance to just give it away for free or you know however they're doing it, it it's like you said it, i think it's a slap in the face and it's a big mistake we don't have to talk about this forever but i would say that this is a thing that i think a lot of people are showing some frustration to pirate you're shaking your head you agree uh, uh -oh. tron gate's a big deal I think it's over. I mean, we, we yeah. know now that, it, you know, they may come, may come in the next version or, or not. You, you give that decision whether or not you're going to buy them or not. And if you're buying them um, on iOS, like Steve C, then you're just <laughs> giving them that opinion that it's working and they should, they should do it. Um, but if you don't, don't, don't put up the, don't pony up the money and they'll see that figures are the way to go. Uh, but I was uh, just on the subject of iOS, just to try to change subject, because we can probably talk about this for an hour. Uh, no, I told the chat room that I was going to get Jason worked up. Keep back on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of one another thing I thought was uh, not great for the community was waiting for that iOS device. Uh, they kept giving out dates, and we thought we were going to November fifth, and then no, it's the end of November. No, it's December. Now January. It, that took a while, and I think that uh, that gave the community another bad taste in their mouth yeah unfortunately do you still build on ios pirate you used to build on the ios right i yeah I, I did a lot of building in ios uh i discovered a problem when i started playing on ios anybody that you have disney id friends with uh can jump into your game at wow. any moment and uh, just from building toy boxes i had a collection of over 100 random di friends that i, I might not have known 
So I had to recently go through a massive purge of my D- Disney IDs and to only get people that I knew who that person was. In uh, which you like, removed me. Yeah, Toy Box. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. You, you missed the cut, Jason. <laughs> yeah. No, that's all right. So, the writing was on the wall. That's all right. I'm not so part of the artist club yet. That's fine. Game. So I had to I had to remove um, Disney ID friends so that because uh, I'd I'd be building a toy box and somebody would jump in a game and start goofing off and then I would have to shut down the game immediately before they uh, destroy it. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't done as much building on it yet. Now that you yeah. bring up that sort of loophole, it makes me want to go in and ruin some of your toy boxes just for fun. <laughs> Oh, you guys. Just start erasing your large terrain pieces and just seeing things <laughs> fall down. <laughs> I kind of want to do that now. Yeah, Fenway guy was definitely purged. Yeah, <laughs> that guy is awesome. Everyone should friend him and request his real name on PlayStation. <laughs> Steve C is going to be trolling Pirate. He's just going to like sit at his PS4 and just wait for He's the back. notification to pop up that uh, Pirate's online. It's so great. He's going to just see Rocket Raccoon just sitting in a corner watching him. <laughs> watching him. Jeez. Staring at me. Hey, I will say something positive since I sound like such a jerk for ranting a little bit. Um, I am not a big fan of the iOS controls, especially because I'm playing on a, a 6, not a 6, whatever it's called, plus, plus, you know, that's as big as my face. Um, I'm playing on a regular one, so it could be that it's smaller, but I love the fact that I can play on Wi-Fi online with Lila when she's not home. And it actually works out really well. The sound is great. The interaction is pretty spot on. It's nowhere near as accurate as the controls and stuff like that. But it's still a fun thing. And, man, the fact that they have that technology to do it remotely like that and do it without stuttering is really cool. So I am liking that. So a fun fact, Jason, or Jason, sorry, Steve C, about the technology behind this uh, this version of the game, the iOS version, there is... There was, prior to Infinity 2.0 on iOS, there was a 2 gigabyte file size limit. This is the first app on the App Store where uh, an app was allowed to to pass that 2 gig limit. And in fact, they just announced that, it, they announced that it was going to happen months ago at the announcement of iOS 8. But uh, they just actually officially implemented it two weeks ago. So Disney Infinity was the very first game. They must have had some uh, some backdoor conversations with uh, Apple between Disney Interactive and, and Apple to get that through. And I, I wonder, I don't know, I it's it's a big game and it takes a long, long time to develop for, but I wonder if any of the delay was caused by that two gigabyte limit. Um, and if so, it's all speculation, right? It's who's to blame? Is it Apple or, or is it again empty promises uh, with those missed dates and stuff but i wonder if that could have been part of the reason for the delay interesting so here's something i missed from 1.0 that um that we don't have 2.0 so um 1.0 they had toys r us exclusives so store exclusives so you would know that a crystal figure was coming out or an exclusive power disc and you would you knew in your calendar you would circle that date and it was an event you went mm. to there trying to get this elusive character and uh, with Disney Infinity like it, it seems like those crystal figures were nicely stocked and some of the um, power disc events had uh, nicely stocked but uh, with amiibos that have come out they've had the, a lot of people have been complaining about having these store events and exclusives mm-hmm. and they're hard to get. I, uh, it's an unpopular opinion, but I kind of wish there was something like that with Disney Infinity, because C- right now all of our collections are exactly the same. Uh, every mm-hmm. one of us are 2.0s. If we have everything, they're exactly the same. 1.0, not everybody bought the crystals. You, the, it made it made some unique collections out there. And as a collector, I I kind of wish I could wait at Toys R Us or outside Target before they opened, talk to people, make friends, and. Uh, and rush in there to get the release. Uh, forgive me, chat. I someone spoke up in the chat when we were discussing uh, the Evil Off stuff in, in the the previous segment, and that they were me. saying that was it you, Steve? That <laughs> you were uh, no, no it wasn't. Me. Someone in the chat was saying that they're actually they may be in the minority, but they're a fan of those chasers, those those variants that are hard to get, uh, like those amiibos you're referring to, pirate. You know what? I, I would hate. 
for the scalping to to kind of arise, even though it, it has happened a little bit with Infinity. Uh, but at the same time, it would be nice to have those special event uh, or, or really rare custom figures. I don't I don't know if they're how they're going to be variants. Um, as long as they're available in Australia. That's a lost science. No, that's a lost market out there. <laughs> they have other things to worry about, like trying not to die by leaving their front doors. Hey, you know what? It's great about the uh, the the, uh, <laughs> the variants at Toys R Us. While I completely agree, you know what my favorite part of those were? Watching my Facebook feed explode for two weeks with people pissed that they bought it too early and the crash register people wouldn't let them pay for it because the <laughs> registers weren't set up for it. Then people showing up saying they never got it. They said they were going to get it last week, blah, 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 blah. So while I think it's fun, I love watching people complain. It was like the biggest <laughs> deal ever. And then the best part was is people complaining for two weeks about they couldn't find Crystal Buzz. That Crystal Buzz figure is still on the shelves today and hasn't been moved. It's hilarious. That's funny. Yeah, it gets it gets somebody it gets us something to talk about um, each month and look forward to. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know that <laughs> we know that in March this lights went off. Uh, we know that in March we'll be able to walk in a store and get Loki and Falcon, and then we're done for several months. I mean, yeah. I wish there was something more to look forward to, or some like uh, the Infinity Inquirer always says, the thrill of the hunt. I wish there right. was something out there for us. So. Great. Uh, guys, we, we kind of need to start wrapping it up. So let's kind of bring it back oh, to <laughs> back to the community section. So we... I'll wrap it up for you. I'll wrap it up. Well, I'm going to mention the community. Like, well, I well... think there's a community identification issue with Disney Infinity. And I think that's whole the whole issue here is that it's like as a community, us here <laughs> listening to this show and talking, I can't tell you how big of a segment we are of the Disney Infinity crowd. We're not that. When I first started with getting the video, I was also I was hoping that we Infinity would get like the power disc would get as big as what Disney pins were and stuff, mm-hmm. and have that collectability about them. Just the way the way Toy Box TV is on the official Disney Infinity channel. That who's that for? You know what I mean? That's not my kind of content. I think we're producing the more adult content, if you <laughs> if you might, might want to say. But that seems like it's targeted young young kids. And it's like, you know what I mean? I just don't think Disney fully understand who they're targeting this product to and hence why I don't think it's reached that amiibo sort of level because they're not targeting us, our age group. So so bringing it back to what Steve was saying about these customs, would would that those types of variant figures, would that enhance the community and would that uh, be something that would be more interesting to uh, the, the older I gameplay demographic? I think... I honestly believe it comes down to a misstep of the Marvel franchise. I think Marvel, the whole Marvel 2.0 thing was pitched as a kid's game, and as a result, the older Marvel fan group completely ignored the game. Yeah, and completely especially ignored because the they game, And they their... looked at the figures, they should look like, they look like kids, kids' they, versions. They look like the Disney Channel versions. There's a gigantic difference between the Disney Channel versions of the character and the other ones. Yeah. yeah, but there's no other. It's a great market because there's no other Marvel games out there this whole entire no. year. I mean, next year there'll be a Lego Avengers game, but what, right. what are people going to play if they don't play Infinity? Yeah. No, I agree. I'm disagreeing with Jason that they they designed the characters <laughs> on a more young scale. They didn't sure. look like the. Yeah. It didn't look like Chris Evans Captain America. It looked like the one from you know Ultra whatever it's called on yeah. Disney XD. And I agree, and I think they look good. I just think it's the, the 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 reality is it didn't capture the older Marvel fans' attention clearly because they're not the ones buying. If they were buying it, there would be a frenzy about the Infinity figures, and there would be much more talk about it what, online. Which is a really big point because, like we've brought up fifty billion times, if Star Wars is the next one, where are they going to go with it? Are they going to make it more look like Rebels or Clone Wars characters, which are Disney Channel shows? Or are you going to make them look like more that the collectors are into? You're going after two giant target markets here. The old school collectors being that we've already noted that toy, that uh, Toy Story, <laughs> that Star Wars is the most collected action figure of all time, more than G.I. Joe. Are you going to make it look more like that or are you going to make it look more like the kid version? It's an interesting point, you know, that's designing the characters like that is a big deal. But, you know, Will, you know, real quick with the community yeah. thing, talking about it. Did we or did we not see Toys R Us try to do organized events 
you know, where they try to get people rallied around. And, you know, I went to three of them Mm -hmm. and one of them was popular. And it was the one that was the Sunday after the game came out 1.0 and everyone was there and people were trading it. The other ones fizzled out and were sort of just dead in the water. You know, they were sort of boring. And a lot of the people that worked there didn't even know what the hell they were doing. They were like not giving out the right discs. They had to go ask a manager. So I think a lot of it has to do with organization as well. But I don't know if this community thing took off the way they were hoping it would you know when you saw the flyers and all that stuff for people lining up you know i had lila there 10 minutes before it Mm -hmm. opened with a bag full of things and a list to write down what we're going to trade and we stayed there for an hour and three people came by and it was just more like okay well not a big deal so i don't know if it actually took off the way they wanted it to what do you think there was a GameStop. uh community event this last weekend actually with lots of sales uh i did not go i don't know anyone in the chat if if you went let us know and if so how was it uh, but i would agree with you steve that it seems like these events although great in concept it, it it didn't take off that way i don't know if it's the blind bags you would think would enhance that idea because you're going to get all these blind bags that you want to trade with people you get duplicates and it, it creates these these uh, experiences, but I don't know. There, we're. It's not like we're we're trading magic cards or we're trading. Although the the series are robust and there's a ton of them, I just don't know if that trading aspect is really. Yeah, I don't think it's taken off like you said, and I don't know really the reason behind that. I don't think that there's enough people localized in an area to go do it. Because I'll tell you, I agree with you on that, but I also disagree because. I've gotten a lot of my discs from trades with people online on the Facebook groups. Unfortunately, each trade results in four dollars in shipping, but you know <laughs> right. that's the that's the biggest trading atmosphere ever is online. You post a picture with the fourteen duplicates that you have, put out there the ones that you need, and then you'll get ten requests, and then you start mailing them out, and, and then people complain that you don't pack them well enough, even though they're little <laughs> plastic discs. But I mean, I think that, that that realm is good because you're getting people together. I don't think that anyone's really rallied behind the game in that massive amount where people are lining up, like you said, magic. That's a really good example because people would go to comic book shops where they have designated times to do it and they would do it all the time. This, I don't think, has reached that level yet. But you know what? That's also because this is only year two. Right. You it know, is- this is 2.0. Maybe when it gets to 5.0 and the games get really intense and, you know, we've had a lot of people that have had a lot of years to get up to Pirate Steve level of building stuff and, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, you got people getting up to Jason's level with complaining. Maybe at that <laughs> point, we'll start to get a community that will rally behind each other and support each other and make an event out of complaining and building. So at that yeah. point, maybe we could take off. But I think right now we're still in the very early stages of it. Uh, the the comments in the chat. So uh, Jason Infinity inquires saying that uh, he the game needs in park exclusives, which I I think Big time would be really cool. Uh, Full of Gunk and let's see, Grinning Ezra went to. So, Full of Gunk says that uh, GameStop events aren't that great. The employees there don't uh, don't care much about Infinity. Uh, Grinning Ezra said he went to two Toys R Us events both times. He was the only one there. Excuse me, uh, Boondog Man was saying that the GameStop employees don't care about the AI. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. So, let's let's kind of. In things, gentlemen, if, if there is one magic bullet, if there's one thing that you could say to kind of improve the community, you know what? Again, I think, should we preface it by saying that the community we don't think is dead? I don't think the community is dead. I don't know if how you guys feel, but there's still a ton of toy boxes each week. Uh, there's just been a few missteps here and there. So, so do you guys have any like magic bullet just to, just to improve the state? of the community and infinity. Jason, I want you to do one for me because you have some and I don't. Well, yes, no, it all starts and ends with the game. If the game is good, the community will grow. The minute the game just, if, if 3.0 comes out and it's another backslide, then the community will dwindle because at the end of the day, doesn't matter how much you love the figures, if you're someone that buys the figures and doesn't play the game, well, your enjoyment ends at the time of purchase. But if you're a toy box builder and so on, the enjoyment lives on. But I don't care how good at building toy boxes you are. If the game is not fun and enjoyable, you will stop building them. So that's why it all comes down to the game. As long as they get the game right, it will grow. If they get Star Wars right, our community will explode because... Yeah. 
people like Pirate Steven and not myself will be producing Star Wars <laughs> toy boxes that will be of playset quality, which is what they wanted right from the get-go, which means unlimited play potential, which mm-hmm. means the community will continue to grow. So it starts and ends with the game. Just get the game right. Everything else will fall in, the to- in behind it. Great. Love it. What do you guys say? Should we end on that? No. I want to say something. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Byron. <laughs> so the, if, you, if you look at this as a, like a sports game or, or sports season, I feel like we're halfway through the season, right? So Those we know Saints. that there'll be a Toy Box Summit probably in August mm-hmm. and, a, uh, and a release sometime August, September, October, we're guessing. So... We're halfway through it. This is this is gonna be a down time, I feel like, um, because there's no other releases besides two figures and potentially two power discs. We don't know when they're coming, but they will. Um, so, this is this is people shouldn't expect much during this time, except they know that toy boxes will be there each week. Yeah. And uh, there's about there's for 2.0. There's seven um, breakout toy box artists that I would categorize f- from this from this release in addition to the people that built in 1.0 so there's a lot of room for people who want to uh, to possibly go to the summit or to make a name of themselves and build in toy boxes uh, if they start right now because um, if you look a lot of people got this game for Christmas you can tell because the number of toy box downloads and likes have gone up ever since this, uh, January. Um, you can look at it. even ones that aren't getting featured are getting thousands of mm-hmm. uh, downloads, which wasn't happening before. So a lot of people have this game now; they're just discovering it. So I would just recommend for people just keep building quality toy boxes and uh, and getting used to the game because when three comes out, I mean it's it's gonna be a game changer. Uh, you can check my my shirt. I have Boba Fett. Um, uh, Big Hero Six shirt, which is a great Disney combination. We got. Uh, Princess Leia slave Elsa on uh, Krellin over there. So the Disney Star Wars clash is going to be incredible uh, for toy boxes. So that's something to definitely look forward to when you think there's nothing else to play in the game. Well, and it's it's not unlock the unlike the position we found ourselves in this time last year, uh, except the beauty of it is, is that the toy boxes are a lot more robust and there's a lot more that you can do. And so those gameplay experiences are can be a lot more complicated so uh yeah yeah, i like it steven i I really like that so jason's saying the community will live and die by the game uh but until we get the next game it will live and die by 2.0 and so there's plenty of content out there to keep playing plenty of um, amazing creators out there toy box artists that are, are making toy boxes so that's that's a good way to buy your time awesome gentlemen Great stuff. Love it. Uh, Steven, what what have you been doing? Do you have anything you want to plug? You want to mention the f- forums again or, or any toy boxes that you're either working on or, or uh, have recently won? No, um, I'm just tired. I, I've, I've been going out, I've been doing this toy boxes for over a year now. Yeah. And, uh, it's exhausting, but a labor of love when you get to see people download and actually play them. So, yeah. Uh, I can't wait to play some more Jason boxes because he's, uh, he's. I can't wait for him to get his first box so we can hear him talk about it. And I mean, it's just, if you look at last year, this year, I mean, Will, you entered a challenge, and Jason, you've entered a challenge, which uh, Will, you did one last year as well. But it's, it's cool to see new people's uh, creative ideas. I got some boxes coming out this month um, that should be entertaining. So I'll let you know the links when uh, those go live. Awesome. Let us know, and we'll said- absolutely mention it. I submitted one that you went up some stairs, and when you jumped off, you landed in that pool, and then you did it again. <laughs> Was that made in, in Extra Life 2013? No, I'm, st- I'm still working on it right now. I can't get the stairs to line up to the pool correctly. <laughs> <laughs> oh awesome well yeah head on over to the infinity fans forum you can uh, you can have conversations with steve outside of our show so make sure you do that steve c what have you been working on uh you want to plug your other things that you are a part of uh media meltdown podcast and media meltdown mouse cast that's the one that's more in line with the people here media meltdown we do a show we're on twitch and no not twitch stitcher and itunes and uh just look us up on instagram and youtube because Will has been on the show. I'm not just plugging some nonsense. Will is a regular on the show. And maybe 
if we get all the people in here to rally behind us, maybe Pirate Steve will finally join the show. Um, I doubt that that'll happen. But anyway, that's all <laughs> I've been doing. And uh, thanks for letting me on and detract the show from any real content that you had to talk about for two hours. I do appreciate it. Oh, love it, man. Uh, so glad to have you and Pirate back. And and uh, my thoughts Don't are echoed lie. very much in the chat room. Hey, it was actually, uh, you know, half the time it's, it's is it going to be random conversation but that's exactly what the show is about and that's what we want so this, this you got invited because it was your birthday to be honest <laughs> no that's my point no that is the whole point if it's not my birthday guess what will's not my friend anymore hey at the top of the show to the chat i said for the very first one of these round tables it was only fitting to have the two of you back on because you guys are fans favorites and people just love hearing uh the conversation when you guys are on so Okay, well, I promise you this. If you ever invite me back again and I actually know what the hell we're doing and doing a roundtable and I actually understand, I will be more professional okay. and less of a moron. I swear. But I just have to know because I didn't know. I didn't even know I was going to be on the show until like three hours ago. So that. next time I know, I'll tone it down and I'll, I'll be more in line with what we're doing. Fine, fine. That sounds good. I'll give you, I will give you more than a two-day warning next time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Today, Jason, shut up. <laughs> Jason, thank you, my friend. Uh, I think this was fun. This is a good, uh, good little event. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It was cool. <laughs> Great. Jameson, I know. Jason, focus, buddy. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, sorry. I'm, I'm looking forward. To, I've got a topic for next week. I'm not going to say what it is now, but I'm excited for next week's roundtable. Whoever's on it. Awesome. Hey, Great. Will, hey, Will, can I ask a question real quick? Is yep. anybody here planning on doing? D23, Star Wars Fest, or any of the things this year? Like, are you going? Steve, are you going? Anything? Does anyone I'm, know? I'm doing D23 for sure. Um, I'm hoping there's an Infinity event like there was last time. So that's my plan. Yeah. Uh, you? Yeah, I'm going to go to D23. All right. Then I'll make sure that I get to go too. I just, I, you oh, lucky people. <laughs> lucky, lucky, lucky all you. Oh, hey, Jason, I'll just stay home just in Australia. Like, didn't you just take like a six month vacation here where you got to do whatever you wanted? Settle down, it buddy. Was, it wasn't D23, though, was it? It's all right. No, it was a cruise and hanging out with Pirate Steve and all this other nonsense. Let's it's just bring it down a notch here. You're invited to D23. I mean, right. you, you yeah. Can... <laughs> if anyone wants, a, anyone wants to, uh, to start a, a was it an Indiegogo for Jason to get to D23, feel free. <laughs> this is your open invitation. I'm only Let's buying first a... class, though, all right? <laughs> Let's do a Kickstarter so... to get Jason down here. Exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, thanks everyone in the chat. It sounds like you guys enjoyed the show. Give us your feedback on, on if you like this new format. Uh, look for us again, twitch.tv forward slash Disney Infinity TV or youtube.com forward slash Disney Infinity TV. And uh, just going to give a end it on, on a bombshell. So in the words of Pirate Steven, if Jason wants to become a, uh, a blossoming toy box artist, all he has to do is build like he rants. And on that bombshell, we hope everyone has a, uh, a great week filled with infinite possibilities.